Let's see how we can convert an image to black and white, giving us the best overall result. Now, making a photo black and white doesn't make it better. In fact, sometimes it can be worse. You want to look for an image that has a lot of lights and a lot of darks. The contrast should only look better once you convert to black and white. But there are several ways to do it. Years ago, we used to only have the option for Image, Mode, Grayscale. But the nice folks at Adobe have kindly warned you that there's a better conversion under Image, Adjustments, Black and White. Let's assume we don't read dialog boxes. Are you guilty of that? And let's hit Discard. Here is the default conversion. Not bad. But we can do better. So where I see grayscale, I'm going to use the History panel under Window History to make a new document from the current state. That way, I can compare the default grayscale conversion to a conversion that I control. Now I'm going to come back to this image and I rarely use image adjustments because I want editability. I want non-destructive or not permanent changes. So I will undo the grayscale and in the adjustments panel I will use black and white. And I think at first it's an identical conversion. Actually, no. Slightly different. I see it in the sign and the building, most of all. A little bit in this building in the background. But here is the power of using an adjustment layer and selectively choosing what happens to your reds, yellows, and greens, cyans, blues, and magentas when it goes to black and white. I can move reds left and right and the red brick building moves dramatically. There's some red in the sign. And if I forget which colors are where, I can simply hit the eye icon to turn them on or off. This is the other beautiful part about using an adjustment layer. You can check yourself. So the reds and oranges are moving a lot. They're all connected. So I'll choose a little bit darker red. The building isn't my goal in this. I don't mind if it fades out a lot. I want the cinema sign to really pop. That's where the yellows come into play. I can move the yellows very far, and I'm actually going for more of a special effect. I want to make this look like an aged black and white photo in the end. Greens don't affect a lot, but you'll see a little band here that's more of a cyan blue-green. And when I move the greens, I can go for a very dark contrast on that, also down in this window. Cyans really affect the sky. You didn't know there was this row of clouds or line of clouds here in the background. But I have to be careful with the cyans because there is some noise in the sky. If I don't want that noise, I would keep the cyan's lighter. I'm actually going for an aged photo look, so I don't mind some of the noise, and I might want some of the detail of the sky. Blues will move this pretty far as well, and I could try less cyan and more blue, and the blue doesn't contain as much noise as the cyan. Watch all of these details while you make your conversions. But a little noise I've decided is okay. Magentas will do virtually nothing, and I think I'm going to go brighter, even blowing out the detail here to really make that sign pop. Now let's compare my work. I'll collapse properties by just clicking the icon, and I'll choose the original grayscale conversion, and I'll drag it far right to dock it next to my conversion. So here is Photoshop's default. I'm noticing it just looks a lot flatter in this area. My goal was to get a little bit more of the sky, to keep the building and the trees very dark, and just call the viewer's eye more to the cinema sign. When I do look at them side by side, 
I may decide to make more adjustments. Maybe I like the sky a little bit lighter. And I want to go farther with the cinema sign to really make it look like an aged photo. Now, there's a significant difference between Photoshop's conversion and my conversion. And I'm much happier with mine because I controlled it. Let's take a look at another shot where we can really use Photoshop's capabilities to make a better black and white conversion with our artistic goals in mind. So I'm going to do the same image, mode, grayscale, and let Photoshop just convert it. And if you don't want to see this warning again because you know there's a better way, you could turn off the warning and go ahead and make it grayscale. Using the History panel, I will make a new document from the current state, and I'll put that where the other grayscale is. I'm not going to save either of these, but I just like a side-by-side -side comparison. So now, I'm going to undo the default conversion and go to my Adjustments panel and Black and White. And you'll see there is a difference already, but it's very subtle in this shot. What's really going to help this one is I can make the skin tones a little bit richer, see some more of sheen and shine in that hair, and maybe a little bit richer lip by adjusting the reds. Since the shoe was magenta, that's going to affect the shoe, and the whole outfit was magenta, very bright. So I can actually go a little bit farther, kind of achieving a black look for this. I'll slide the yellows right and left, and the hair and the wood in the background, and the green chalkboard has a yellow tone. So I want to keep the hair on the lighter end, but still keep some detail in there. So I'm constantly playing with these values until I'm happy. When you move one, it impacts other colors, so I'm constantly adjusting. Greens will affect that chalkboard, and it's not paramount to the shot, but if I go too dark, it almost looks like it's out of focus. However, that's the real shadow that the camera caught, so I don't want to make that shadow look fake, so I have to be careful how far I go with those greens. I'll move the cyans, and there's virtually nothing in cyan, so I could leave it anywhere. Same with blues, but here's my biggest change. To really call attention to the outfit and the shoe, I'm going to move the magentas, which this time, unlike the reds, won't affect her skin tone, the hair, the wood. I'll move magentas to a very dark, almost like she's wearing a black outfit, and these are black satin shoes, and it also calls more attention to the sparkles on the shoes. So now if I collapse, here's a completely different image. Default conversion with little control. Complete control over your black and white using an adjustment layer for black and white and individually controlling how the colors move and what shade of gray they pick up, dark or light, based on their original color. Do try this with some of your images that just don't have complementary colors in them or where you want more of a vintage feel. But try to look for images that do have a lot of whites and darks, not just a lot of all colors, grays, greens, reds, blues. If it's very mid-range without a lot of contrasting light and dark areas, it's not the best candidate for a black and white. But I hope you picked up a few tricks, and I wish you good luck with far more controllable black and white conversions using a black and white adjustment layer.